Hi, everyone. I'm Bruno Ziza, and welcome to another episode of Data Journeys. This is where we come to learn from data leaders, their growth, their lessons. And today, I'm excited for you to discover Ramnik. She's at LiveRamp. Ramnik, thank you so much for spending the time with us today. Thank you, Bruno and team, for this opportunity to talk about uh, LiveRamp and uh, our journey related to GCP. All right, Ramnik. Well, let's go straight into it. What does LiveRamp do? So LiveRamp is world's leading data connectivity platform. We make it safe and easy for our customers to use customer data effectively and efficiently wherever it may be. We help our clients to connect the data within their enterprise, collaborate with partners, as well as activate data across broader ecosystem. We maintain world's largest and most accurate identity graph we are also industry's neutral data connectivity platform at scale, working with more than 50 of leading SSPs and DSPs. We have more than 600 plus technical partnerships. We have integration with the digital leaders as well as social platforms with more than like 75 million connected TV households. We also work with 160 plus data providers across leading categories such as CPG, transaction, auto, retail, B2B, and more. Our governance, world's leading governance design and privacy first design ensures that the data is used safely and effectively and its use is controlled downstream. We have world's one of the largest infrastructure and which includes Hadoop deployments with more than 90,000 CPUs, 300 terabyte of memory and 30 petabyte of a storage. We run more than 100,000 John applications to deliver billions of records per day to our partners. So one of the largest Hadoop deployments in the world, 90,000 CPUs, 300 terabytes of memory, 30 petabytes of storage, 100,000 Yarn applications. So you know what it means to deploy data at scale. Let's talk about the use cases and particularly the migration. So uh, a little bit about our journey to data proc. So after our GCP migration, we first started continue to use our existing uh, Hadoop vendor uh, cloud data director, but we had multiple challenges, including reliability issues, ease of use, as well as like a auto scaling issues, as well as support from uh, from the vendor. So which helps us thinking that we need to start looking for a better solution for our Hadoop cluster management. We did like a pretty detailed analysis and following with the factors we used for this evaluation between different vendors. First thing first, starting with the support. We really needed expert Hadoop support from, uh, from our new vendor and uh, as well as close partnership with the team when we are working uh, through the new solution. Data proc surely comes as, came as one of the solutions, especially even during analysis time, we got very good uh, support and collaboration from the TAM team as well as customer success management team working closely and helping us with the journey for migration. The second main area was multiple features offered from data proc as solution. First, built-in autoscaler. As we mentioned, like we had our in-house autoscaler and we had multiple issues as well as overhead of management. Data proc providing uh, autoscaler helped us move away from that overhead as well as remove the challenges and make it much easier for teams to auto scale uh, clusters based on the workload. And second was ease of use. Data proc APIs make it really easy for our teams to for creating, deletion, and updating of cluster. Data proc also offers data from Terraform support, which makes it easier for teams to have Hadoop cluster sitting right next to with the rest of our infrastructure. And finally, data procs are supporting all and updated big data technologies, especially support for Spark and MapReduce, which was so critical for live ramp. And further down the list, very high performance in terms of a faster uh, cluster creation, deletion, and, up, uh, and scaling. 
from our analysis, we found that um, uh, the cluster creation and deletion and uh, even adding like 100 nodes, moving to 100 nodes, all these timings were less than five minutes, which was uh, so critical for teams to, uh, in terms of high performance for cluster uh, management. And finally, um, Dataproc offered high reliability, which was one of our previous challenges. It, it offers like clearly externally ex uh, managed, like SLA managed solution, which enabled us to kind of come uh, stay on top of our, our external SLAs for our customers. And cost uh, always, uh, like we are, although the primary focus for migration was actually to migrate cost as is, but we were aware of PVM, PVM configuration post migration as we started looking into uh, doing more cost analysis, migrating to PBM really helped us with the cost optimization for Hadoop clusters. And we are in some of our clusters, we are even now at 40% PBM percentage, really, which really helped us reduce our cost for Hadoop uh, infrastructure at LiveRamp. Wow, that's really quite impressive. When we're talking about performance here, you're talking about cluster creation, deletion, less than five minutes, adding 100 nodes, less than five minutes, removing 100 or 200 nodes, less than five minutes. So it's giving you great infrastructure uh, to scale to your, your ambition. Can we talk a little bit about the use cases? You know, How is the data used? What, what are people at LiveRamp doing with the data that you have created such a great environment to stand on? So uh, most of our data is in terms of uh, uh, data, batch processing data, basically. So we have uh, 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 multiple products here, like onboarding, FBR, data, uh, data networks, and data partnership, which in uh, which it, it requires like multiple, uh, like you know, Hadoop pipelines, workflows uh, here at LiveRamp administered, and uh, delivering uh, uh, more than billions of records. Uh, per day to our customers, uh, delivered to multiple different partnerships. And it's data scientists, business analysts, who are the folks interacting with this? So mostly it's big data engineers at LiveRamp. Plus we have like whole separate unit uh, for data scientists and data analysts as part of our another product suite, which is LiveRamp Safe Haven. That's great. So you've got internal use and you're building data products on top of that data. Now you've told us a lot about the benefits of the platform for you. I'm curious about the best practices, what you've learned uh, throughout this journey. So we like to start with the positive. So what would you say the three things that everybody needs to consider when they start a journey like yours? So one of the, uh, the best practices we followed as big data infrastructure team was like even before we start the migration, we worked on uh, developing some tools to gather metrics so that we can compare our performance and reliability before and after migrations. So some of the key metrics which we looked into was job uh, runtime, uh, a job and task, waiting time, uh, failed jobs, failed tasks, uh, comparison of uh, preemptible uh, lifespan and impact of that on our uh, reliability for our jobs. So this, like uh, these metrics and dashboards, really help the teams involved into migration to compare the performance and reliability before and after migration, and help us kind of make good calls even during the migration. The second main area was focus that. We kept migration as a primary focus to improve reliability and migrate costs at cost as is, which helped us actually complete the migration on time. Although after post migration, we did spend a good amount of time in terms of cost optimization and finally working closely and making the best of our excellent customer success management as well as TAM support. It really helped us through our journey for data proc migration as well as after migration helped us to stay connected with the product management as well as the engineering team and stay connected on the roadmap for new features. That's great. So creating metrics before and after the migration. So you know if you're improving and how you're improving. I'm curious, did you do this by yourself? I know you mentioned uh, Google's Teams help, but did you also involve a partner in this deployment? So mostly it was like uh, us, uh, we have a centralized big data infrastructure team working with engineering team on our side, as well as the customer success management and camp team. 
So we've talked about the best practices. Let's talk about the flip side of that. Maybe the things that people need to avoid, they might make sense at the beginning, but maybe they shouldn't happen or maybe they should happen later. What are some of the don'ts that you would suggest people to consider? One of the items, what we learned was that we don't rely directly on alpha and beta products without having explicit partnership with the TAM team as well as the engineering teams. Specifically, any pre-GA projects don't come with the uh, uh, direct SLAs. So it is always a good idea to have partnership, establish like you know early conversations with the engineering team and the product management team so that we can do good risk analysis before we start trying out those features and make it part of our uh, rollout uh, internally in our teams. So in, uh, in one good example for us was like a working uh, um, and looking into the feature enhanced flexibility mode, which we started early, uh, early conversations under uh, while the feature was still pre-GA, but working through the working with the TAMS and we were able to successfully roll this out at LiveRAM. What else should we uh, consider avoiding so, or maybe paying yeah. attention to? So for sure, don't forget about uh, the network quotas as well as uh, another limitation and uh, other limiting cloud factors, especially with the data proc. It offers us to have a much higher node count as pre than pre our previous Hadoop uh, vendor, which also meant that we had often to update our IP uh, space ranges as well as update our uh, quotas, especially when we were working through multiple VM configurations and disconfigurations. And finally, don't forget about the interaction between preemptables and CUDs. We know that CUDs make compute cheaper and preemptables make it a lot cheaper. So specifically when we are looking uh, post-migration, when we start looking into further migration into preemptables, it was a good idea to work closely with the cloud FinOps team so that we can see what is the impact of uh, cuts utilization as we migrate to preempt tables. Well, Randik, this was amazing. We learned a lot from you, setting up metrics, thinking about performance, and not just partnering on the technology side, but also partnering on the financial operations side. Randik, thank you so much for spending the time with us today. Thank you for having me. And I hope people are gonna reach out to you. In fact, if you wanna find out more about customers just like this, Click on the link down below to sign up for the series. Until next time, I'm Bruno Ziza.